Shalom Amakim. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Baha Hashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Arahakwadash, double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops at Great Millstone, peace and salutations to the elect. So I just want to go into a quick lesson, and I'm probably going to entitle this This Law Will Be Utilized in the Kingdom. And I'm going to just get straight into it. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai willing is edifying. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, and I start at 14. It says, For if we believed that Yahawashai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahawashai will the Most High bring with him. Which basically this is talking about, you know, those individuals that have died in the truth. Okay? So they're not lost forever, you know, like the Christian church would have you believe. They burning in hell somewhere, you know, because they, you know, weren't saved alive. Yahweh Shah is going to bring those individuals with him. Okay. Let me bring this out real quick. This is Revelation 14 and 13. It says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, Yahweh Shemi Yahweh Shah, from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labor, so they don't have to do the work anymore. Okay, those individuals that have died in the knowledge, all right? It says that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Okay, so they're still going to receive that reward, even though they're not down here on the earth. All right? So if you talk to a wacky tacky Christian, you know, he'll tell you they already in heaven or something. You know, or they probably in hell burning up, you know. They're not going to see uh, the coming of the Lord. No, they will be there when Yahweh Shai returns, okay. Matter of fact, they're going to be in the same ship that Yahweh Shai is going to be in, all right. This is back in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. It says, for if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so, them also would sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with him. So they're going to be with Yahweh Shai in the ship. All right. Any individual that has died in the truth, you're going to see them again in the kingdom. Okay. Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai willing, we're part of that number that's slated to make it. It says, For this we say unto you, that by the word of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, shall not prevent them which are asleep. So we ain't going to stop the ones that have already died, okay? We ain't going to hinder their reward, all right? It says, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, okay? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of the Most High and the dead in Hamashiach shall rise first. So those individuals that have died in the truth, they're gonna receive their reward first, okay? It says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. So the individuals that are still alive down here on the earth, they're gonna be taken up, they're gonna get beamed up, okay? Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, the clouds of the chariots, okay? These bugged out people out here will actually believe that you're going to get sucked up into a cloud. You know, no, the clouds are the chariots, okay? It says, to meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. And to these bug outs out here, that's salvation. You know, which it is, okay, because this is actually going to happen, all right? But in their mind, when they read this, they just thinking about clouds, you know, okay? You get taken up into the clouds, and you're going to go to the pearly gates, you're going to have wings on your back and you're going to be floating in heaven for the rest of, you know, eternity. All right. No, the elect of the nation of Israel are going to be beamed up into the chariots. OK, and then they're going to be in the heavens. But something else is going to happen after that. That's not the end of the story. OK, you ain't going to have, you know, seven years of tribulation down here or Satan. He come up out of the earth and then start taking over the, the, the planet and have his minions running around, little demons. That ain't going to happen, man. Okay, that's all madness. That's a fairy tale. Okay, it says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And these words are comforting because this is actually going to happen. Okay, the things that we are experiencing now, we ain't never going to experience those things again. Okay, but after the deliverance happens, okay, the elect are going to be released 
from those chariots. Okay, this is Revelation 21 and 1. It says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Okay, so the new rulership is going to be established down here on the earth. All right. The elect are going to be taken up into those chariots, into the clouds. Okay. And a new rulership is going to be established because the old rulership is going to be done away with. Okay, just like we read in Daniel, the seventh chapter. All right. It says that, you know, uh, that last beast, which was ruling, is going to be given to the flame. It's going to get burned up. Okay. And the whole statue, you know, going back to uh, Daniel, the second chapter, that whole statue is going to be destroyed. So there ain't going to be no heathen rulership down here on the earth. Okay, the kingdom of heaven is going to be established. All right, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, which that first heaven and that first earth was a world ruled by the heathen. Okay, where they had rain down here. It says, And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High out of heaven. Now, this ain't talking about a city. That's that's built it with, with you know bricks and all that. Okay, like you got these cities here in Babylon Okay, you ain't gonna see an actual city, you know buildings coming down streets, you know street lamps This is talking about the nation of Israel. Okay, and let's get a precept on that Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. This is Ezekiel 5 and 5. It says thus saith the Lord Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai power This is Jerusalem I have set it in the midst of the nations and the countries that are round about her. You can't move countries, okay? You can't pick America up and then move it somewhere, okay? Or place America in, in, a, in a place where it's going to be surrounded by the countries that it ain't, that it's, uh, you know, not surrounded by already, okay? You can't put America over there in Europe and have it be surrounded by those different countries, okay? This is talking about the people. It says, I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her, and she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and the land cannot change its laws. The people that are responsible for executing laws and, and you know, enacting them is the people. Okay? So Jerusalem is talking about the, the people. It says that she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her, for they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in them. Okay, so that just proves the point. So what John is seeing here, all right, he's seeing Jerusalem, okay, the nation of Israel, the elect of the nation of Israel come down out of heaven. Okay, and why, did, why is he seeing them coming down? Because just like we read in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, they got taken up. Okay. So back in Revelation 21 and 2, it says, And I, John, saw the holy city. The holy city is the nation of Israel, okay? In that perfect state, okay? Those new bodies, unable to commit sin. It says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, which that word new, when you look it up in the Greek, it's kainos, which just means to be renewed, okay? So Jerusalem, the nation of Israel, the sons of God are going to be restored to their original state, Okay? Coming down from the Most High out of heaven. And why is John seeing them come down? Because just like you read in 1 Thessalonians, they got beamed up. Okay? It says, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, the, the men of the nation of Israel. Okay? Because we are the servants of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. The Most High created us to serve him down here on the earth. Okay, we are the priest of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Okay, so he ain't talking about any man that's down here on the earth. See, God, he dwells, he dwells with men. No, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai dwells amongst the nation of Israel. Okay, so the men that it's talking about here are men of the nation of Israel. Okay, this is Numbers 35 and 34. It says, Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, the Lord, Yahabashim Yahawashai, dwell among the children of Israel. Okay? So the men that it's talking about here in Revelation, the 21st chapter, they're Israelites. Okay? The Most High ain't dwelling with no, no heathen, man. Okay? A heathen spirit is not compatible with the spirit of Yahabashim Yahawashai. 
So back in Revelation 21 and 3, it says, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of the Most High is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the Most High himself shall be with them and be their power. Okay, as the Heavenly Father promised to our forefather Abraham, that everlasting covenant is finally going to be established. It says, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, because we're going to be immortal. Okay, that curse of death is going to be removed from the Israelites. It says, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away. So all these curses are going to be wiped away. Okay, every single curse going all the way back to Adam is going to be completely done away with, man. We ain't going to have to, uh, you know, work and toil for our food anymore. All right, we ain't going to die. Okay, and then the curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, that's going to be a thing of the past, man. we just going to be blessed, okay? So you ain't going to have nothing to feel sorry about, you know? You ain't going to have nothing really to be sad about, man. The, the kingdom, like the scriptures, you know, uh, call it over and over again, is going to be everlasting joy, literally, because we're not going to die, all right? It says, And the Most High shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Okay, and when you look this word pain up, the, the word there is work. Okay, so you, you ain't gonna have to work no more. Just like it says in Isaiah, the 61st chapter. We gonna minister to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And these other nations, they're gonna be out there, you know, uh, doing the heavy lifting, man. Tending to our vineyards, tending to our orchards. Okay, being our, 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 the shepherds of our flocks. Okay, the only time you're going to have to do something is if you actually want to do it. Okay, and if you, you know, want to go out there and, you know, deal with your cattle. Okay, or go walk to your orchard and pick, uh, or, you know, uh, fruit. All right, you want to tend to your vine vineyard. It's going to be for pleasure. Okay, because that's what this earth was created for. The name of the earth is Idan. Okay, or Eden. You know, which means a paradise or joy. So everything you do down here is supposed to bring you joy, man. Okay, it ain't supposed to be a burden unto you. The reason why it's a burden now is because we under the curses. But you hop out, you out, shy, gonna wipe that all away. All right. It says, and there shall uh, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. So that old world is gone. Okay, and what's gonna be established? A new world. All right. Based upon what? The law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And we ain't gonna, you know, ask you other nations whether you want this or not. Okay? This is the will of the Heavenly Father. It's gonna be established whether you like it or not. Okay? So when the nation of Israel comes out of those chariots, all right, with those new bodies, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai is gonna give them a commandment. All right? Just like you uh, see in that movie, Brightburn. Okay, take the world. That, that's that's going to be the commandment. Okay, subdue the world. Well, real quick, let's go back to the beginning. The commandment that the Most High gave to the sons of God, okay, was to subdue the earth. Okay, and those commandments are going to be given out again to the nation of Israel when they come out of those chariots, man. All right. This is uh, Genesis 1 and 26. It says, and the, and the power said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So the nation of Israel is going to have dominion over everything. Okay. Everything that's been created belongs to the nation of Israel. All right. It says, so the powers created man in, in their own image is really what it should say. In the image of the powers created they them. Okay, male and female created he them. And the powers blessed them and the power said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. And that's what we're going to do. Okay. When we get out of those chariots, man, you how about Shimmy, how shy willing. We part of that number. Okay, when we get out of those chariots and the, and the kingdom gets established, the things get set up, all right? We, we are in the position of power, okay? Hey, 
procreation is going to be one of the, the main things on, on the list. Okay? Per the commandments of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. It says, And the powers blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And the earth is going to be subdued under the nation of Israel, under the laws of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shah. So we ain't going to go out there doing our own thing. Okay? Setting up our own, uh, uh, you know, laws. All right? We ain't gonna sit down and, and, and write no constitution of what you think is right, brother. Oh, yeah, yeah, we gotta put that in there. No, the, the laws have already been written. It says, and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And that includes everything, okay? Even you people, all right? You other nations, you belong to the nation of Israel, okay? Which is the reason why you ain't gonna have no choice in the matter, okay? You belong to us. This is Daniel 7 and 18. It says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. So we're going to take rulership. Okay? We ain't going to sit down and have no vote. Okay? We ain't going to go to the United Nations and ask them for, uh, you know, uh, what you think. You think the nation of Israel should rule? Okay? We ain't going to go to the UN Security Council and ask them what they think. Oh, Russia, you think, you know, the nation of Israel should be set on top? Oh, well, what about you, America? What about you, China? How do you feel? Oh, well, you know, we don't think that uh, the Israelites are right fit for, you know, ruling the earth. We're going to we're gonna decline, you know? Oh, yeah, America, we're going to side with China or Russia. We're going to side with, you know, America and China. Oh, well, I guess the Israelites ain't really, ain't nah. It, it don't matter whether you want this to happen or not. Okay, because this is the will of the Heavenly Father. All right? And if you don't want to willingly submit to the nation of Israel, we're going to do it by force. Okay? Because these other nations are going to buck up, man. They don't want the nation of Israel to rule in the first place. All right? So we're going to have to go around the world and subdue these people. All right? Which is also a part of prophecies. This is uh, Sirach 4 and 11. It says, Wisdom exalteth her children, and layeth hold of them that seek her. He that loveth her loveth life, and they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. Okay, and the joy is going to come from you being in the kingdom. Okay. It says, He that holdeth her fast shall inherit glory. Okay, being part of the, the first fruits of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, taking part in that first resurrection. It says, and wheresoever she entereth, the Lord, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, will bless. They that serve her shall minister to the Holy One, and them that love her, the Lord, Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, doth love. Whoso giveth ear unto her shall judge the nations, and he that attendeth unto her shall dwell securely. So whoso giveth ear unto wisdom, okay, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of Yahweh Shem, Yahweh Shai, you're going to judge the nations. You're going to be set up as the rulers of these other nations okay and what we gonna do we gonna go around the world Yahweh Yahweh Shai willing we're part of that number and we're gonna put these nations in subjection man okay we're gonna put chains on their neck we're gonna put fetters on their feet all right and we're gonna force them to submit to the will of Yahweh Shai this is Psalms 149 and 5 it says let the saints be joyful in glory let them sing aloud upon their beds, okay? And the saints are talking about the Israelites, okay? Let the saints be joyful in glory. Glory is the kingdom. So when the nation of Israel is in the kingdom, they're going to they gonna sing for joy, okay? Why? Because that relationship between them and Yahweh Shai has been permanently mended, okay? And it's going to be unable to be broken, all right? The nation of Israel is never going to end up in the situation that we're in right now. Okay, so you waking up and being able to experience that, that's a joyous thing, you know. It says, let, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of the Most High be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. Okay, and that's the actual two-edged sword. All right. It ain't, it ain't talking about the word, okay. <laughs> we ain't going to be walking around with Bibles, you know, and then you, you heathen say something and we're going to, you know, make motions like we cutting you up. No, you you, you gonna actually get cut, okay? With a, with an actual sword if you get out of line. All right. It says to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. 
okay, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. So you people, you go on to slavery, all you other nations, okay? So when the elect comes out of those chariots, all right, just like we read in Genesis, the first chapter, Yahweh is going to give the commandment to subdue the earth. All right. Which means what? You other people, you're going to be put in subjection. You're going to be put in chains. All right. It says to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. OK. And that's where this law comes in. OK. Because we're going to go around the world, Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai, Willing, we part of that number. We're going to go around the world and subdue you people. There's going to be slave hunts in the kingdom to go and put you people in subjection. All right? Because when we come down out of those chariots, you ain't going to have everybody in chains. You know, you might have some people come and submit themselves to us. But for the most part, these people ain't going to be willingly willing participants in the establishing of the kingdom they ain't gonna you know willingly go into slavery man so we're gonna have to go to war with them all right this is deuteronomy 21 and 10 it says will now go us forth to war against thine enemies and the lord yahweh show me how thy power have delivered them into thine hands and thou hast taken them captive what are we gonna do we're gonna go around the entire world and put these people in captivity okay it says, and seest among them, so like, and seest among the captives a beautiful woman, a, a woman of the, the other nations, okay, and hast a desire unto her that thou wouldest have her to wife. Now, all the word wife means, when you look it up in the Hebrew, it's just woman, all right? So if you want her to be your woman, okay, this don't mean that y'all going, you know, join households, okay? You just going to take her as yours. She, she become your property. It says, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. This is going to be, you know, utilizing the kingdom, man. Okay, because we're going we gonna to conquer these other nations. All right, hey, and these other nations, they got some, some good-looking women. Okay, hey, but we have to handle things according to the law. All right, so, hey, we're we, we going we gonna to implement this, man. <laughs> It says, then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head and pare her nails. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her, and she shall remain in thy house and be well her father and her mother a full month. And after that, thou shalt go in unto her and be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. Okay, so she's going to belong to us. All right. She's still going to play the position of a heathen woman. She's going to be a concubine. Okay. But hey, these, the, the women of the other nation are going to be ours as well. Okay, just like it says here, you see one of them, them good-looking uh, uh, Ishmaelites, you know, you just conquer Ishmael, you see them good-looking Ishmaelites among the captives, you got a desire unto her, hey, you take her for yourself. It says, and it shall be, if thou shalt have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go uh, whither she will, but thou shalt not sell her at all for money, thou shalt not make merchandise of her because thou hast humbled her, which we ain't really going to have to deal with that. Okay, because there ain't going to be, you know, no divorce uh, in the kingdom. You had these heathen women pretty much until they, they, they perish, man. Okay, but this is going to be implemented in the kingdom. This, this law will be utilized. All right, because we're going to conquer these other nations. Okay, and you, you're going to see some beautiful women, man. You're going to see some, some beautiful heathen women. All right, and Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai has laid it out of how we're supposed to deal with that when that happens. Okay, you know, since we want to go into that, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai willing, it was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bashim Yahweh Hakadash, double honor to the apostles and the elder bishops at Great Millstone. Shalom.